All right, at the beginning of the week, we talked about attribution theory. We defined what it was. We talked about internal locus of control versus external locus of control. Now we're going to talk about self-serving bias and even fundamental attribution error. Right. This is going to tie into your group activities. We talked about how the first half of the semester tied into the second half, how Bandura's mediational process talked about motivation, just added motivation essentially to information processing theory, how motivation was tied to effort, and we connected that to internal locus of control versus external locus of control. But now we're going to take attribution error and self-serving bias. And we're going to talk about those in terms of the activity for the day. So now we're getting to some fairly simple activities. They're easy to put together, but they don't really have any components that you've seen before. They're all different to some extent, and they require a lot of effort. To go in if we wanted to go back into locus of control. Yes, you have to have an ability to do it, so you need to, to be good at physical activities. So you have to have a certain level of physical fitness, or if you don't, then you have to rely on your group and attack it as a team. And so how well do you function within groups? That falls into ability, ability. And then you have effort. How much effort are you willing to put into this activity. You don't want to get bogged down in task difficulty and you don't want to rely on luck. We want to focus more on the things that we can control for these primitive activities. And I believe we're going into the fire saw. And if, if it's not the fire saw, it'll be something as difficult as the fire saw. So now let's look at self-serving bias. Self-serving bias is based on your performance. What behavioral attributions are you attributing to your performance? Typically, if somebody is successful and they're talking about them themselves being successful at an activity, they tend to exhibit it as something internal to them. You know, I did this because I'm physically fit if we want to talk about an activity, like a hands-on activity. Or I did well on that test because I'm just good at this subject. You know, I just have a natural ability at that subject. I put forth a lot of effort. It tends to be all their descriptive words about their performance tend to be internal. But if they fail, they tend to go external. Oh, I've got a terrible teacher for this subject. Oh, it was just too hard of a class. Task difficulty was super hard. So this is somebody referring to themselves. Now, fundamental attribution error is somebody attributing somebody's performance to something internal to them, some sort of fault that's internal. So let's say we're doing a group activity, right? And a fellow classmate performs poorly on that activity. When it's somebody explaining somebody else's performance, they tend to go internal on them if they fail. Oh, they're just not very intelligent. Oh, they're just not a kinesthetic learner. They're not good at activities. They're not physically fit enough to pull this off. So they tend to go internal on their descriptive words for failures of others. But if they fail, they tend to go external. So that's how self-serving bias and fundamental attribution error are connected. Self-serving bias is your giving descriptive words on why you either succeeded, and if you succeeded, you tend to give descriptive words that are internal. And if you failed, you tend to give external reasoning or descriptive words for your failures. But when you're talking about other people's failures within your group or whoever you're assessing, making evaluations about, those descriptive words tend to be internal to them based on failures. What I want you to do today is make your video about either one of those. I would prefer self-serving bias and talk about why you succeeded at this task and why, if you failed, what descriptive words do you use on why you failed. Or you can do it another way where you're the person making the video for your group. You're watching their attempt at that activity and give some descriptive words 
for the reason why they failed and see if it falls into one of these two categories. Now, I'm obviously skewing the results because I just defined what this is. Typically, when you want to make observations about self-serving bias or fundamental attribution error, you don't tell the person what you're doing. You're just making observations. And you would go up to them and say, all right, you performed this task. Why were you successful? Or can you explain why you failed at this task? And you can say it individually and you can say, all right, those people just did this task. Why do you think they failed? And you can see if it falls into these categories. But once you explain it to somebody, it's going to skew the results because they kind of know what you're looking for. When somebody doesn't know that you're assessing one of these two and they don't know anything about it, you'll find that it'll fit in these categories fairly well. But when they know, it's going to skew the results. So just be aware of that. That's not important for what we're doing. I just want you to understand that this happens. It's really important when you start making evaluations of others. It's extremely important for me that I don't fall into fundamental attribution error when I'm assessing you as students. It's extremely important for me when I fail that I don't fall into this external blaming, making excuses for myself when I fail. That's how it's used in life.